Hey, I'm gonna show you how to paint a graffiti alphabet. These are the, the normal letters that I do on t-shirts all the time. They're not incredibly complex or anything like that. Uh, they're just the basic styles that I, that I knock out all the time. The first thing I'm doing here is I'm laying down what I call the bones of the letters. It's just sketching out the layout the shape and the size, making sure that everything has enough room to coexist peacefully together. Um, each letter has enough room to stretch out. Now normally I wouldn't be laying down these lines, these bones so dark, um, it would be very subtle, just enough to see it. But in this case I want to be able to show you, you know, where the letters are going, I'm not trying to hide it. So now here I'm jumping straight into outlining the letters. Um, that might be a little difficult to do without being familiar with the shape of the letters. Um, something you need to think about, and, and I'll make a separate video on this all by itself, but you can watch as I'm, as I'm going along. I'm imagining these yellow lines as thicker strokes, and then I'm outlining those imaginary thick strokes with my black paint here. Um, you can see that there is a consistent thickness to the shapes that I'm creating with the black airbrush. How I was taught to, to do this and imagine this is, imagine using a chisel tip marker, a big fat chisel tip marker to, to go over your initial bones, those yellow lines. Um, in some areas, depending on the direction of your stroke, that, thick, that stroke would be thin. And in some areas, that stroke would be thicker because of the of the shape of the, the chisel tip marker. Um, and after you've imagined what that stroke would look like, you outline it. That's what I'm doing here with the black. If that's difficult to do, then you can just sketch what it would look like. You can you can take another yellow or a white or a light color or something, and you can kind of sketch what that chisel tip marker would look like. And then once you're done with that, then you can come back and do the black outlines. Um, once you get enough practice, though, you should be able to do this in your head, and you can do it quickly enough to not have to do that sketch. That's going to save you a whole lot of time, and it's going to um, eventually unlock a little bit of freedom so that you can make these decisions on the fly, and you can think about how the letters are going to intersect and things. Now, if I'm doing a, a more complicated piece, or I really want to do a, a great job and make some realistic shading or something like that, then I'm still going to sketch out the letters. I'll still sketch out where the blocks and extra bars and stuff will be and I'll, I'll really plan how the letters are going to intersect. Um, but if I'm doing a quick t-shirt, the things that I'm usually doing, I'm able to do a good enough job with the shape and the layout of the letters by just imagining their strokes. And I think that you should strive for that. Maybe not start with that, but strive for that at some point. Like I said, I'm going to make a, another video about how to, to design the letters, how to sketch them out and what I mean by having a consistent width of the strokes that you're creating. There's a big difference, and it's, sometimes it's a hard difference to see until you know what you're looking at. There's a big difference between good graffiti letters and uh, not good graffiti letters. And a lot of that has to do with the, the shape and consistency of the thickness of the letters. Just like your script lettering or any other kind of lettering or design, uh, there are rules to be followed, there's math to be calculated, there are things that you need to do to keep up with consistency, there's a right and wrong way uh, to do things, and if you don't follow some sort of rule, you're, it's going to look very strange, and you might not understand why it looks strange, you might not recognize it at all until you figure out those rules, and then you'll go, oh wow, I was not following those rules. And just like any other rules of design, once you know them, once you're comfortable with them, then you can start to bend and break them how you would like uh, because you're going to come up with your own rules and algorithms and things, and that's how you develop your own style. What I'm doing here is I'm showing you my style, my very simple airbrush t-shirt style of graffiti letters, but your goal shouldn't be to copy this style. It might be a good first step. It might be a good starting point. It'll help you sell some t-shirts, uh, but if you're going to get into graffiti and start doing your own lettering, you need to develop your own style. There's no such thing as the basic default graffiti lettering. It's just your graffiti lettering. It's your style. Um, in the airbrush t-shirt world, which is where we make our money usually, uh, you need to focus on legibility. 
this isn't wild style graffiti. We're not on a subway. Uh, the people want to be able to read their shirts typically. Uh, so while style is very important and vital to, to what we're doing here, if the shirt isn't legible at the end of the day, most customers are not going to be happy with it. That's not what they're here for. So your goal is to come up with a quick, legible, stylish alphabet that you can knock out without too much thought, without too much concern. And that's my goal here. That's what I'm trying to teach you. Something simple. Really, start with your block lettering. Learn a couple of the graffiti rules. Learn where to make some flair. And uh, send it. Hopefully this was somewhat educational as, a, as an introductory uh, lesson. We're going to dive deeper into everything. Deeper into the shape and the layout of the letters. We're going to dive into the, the rules and the algorithms that I'm talking about. And we're going to learn how to break all those rules. We're going to have a great time together. Um, i got a bunch of different styles we can do. We can mix it up. Let's have a great time with it. Thanks for watching, guys.